you're here. Great. Thanks for joining me. I'm Lois Donovan, and this is Wordsmith with us on Yabs TV, where we are going to make the ordinary extraordinary. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be an alchemist? In medieval times, the alchemists searched for the philosopher's stone, the magic elixir that could turn ordinary lead into gold. Being a writer is a little like being an alchemist. In this video, I'm going to share three special ingredients for our magic elixir so that you too can turn the mundane, the ordinary, into something fantastic, maybe even brilliant, possibly extraordinary. Before we get started, I want to tell you about a special bonus offered to anyone watching prior to August 5th. At the end of the video, there's a fun writing activity for you to try. If you do the activity and send it to Young Alberta Book Society TV at gmail.com by August 5th, I'll read it and offer some feedback in a follow-up video. Questions are also welcome. Are you ready to try your skills as an alchemist? Let's get started. Have you ever read a book where you feel as though you're right there in the middle of the story? I love that. It's like a kind of magic where the author draws you into the story and you never want to leave. Do you know how authors create that magic? Detail. The more specific the detail, the more readers can picture themselves right there in the midst of the action. Time to put your experience to work. To show that you can transform pretty much any situation, I've chosen brushing your teeth, because like everyone's had experience brushing their teeth, right? Hopefully. Imagine brushing your teeth. Better yet, Stand in front of the bathroom mirror and watch as you brush your teeth. Pay attention to all five senses, from the tingling of the toothpaste on your tongue to the water swishing around in your mouth, maybe even the horrible taste of the new toothpaste your parents bought. I know, you're thinking, that's kind of boring. Like, do I really want my character brushing his teeth for a whole page in the story? Probably not. But don't worry, we're not finished with this activity yet. And remember, the more you practice collecting details, the more observant you become. Pay attention to everyday situations. Notice everything, from the way people walk, to the way they gesture with their hands, to how they eat, what they wear. Trust me, your friends are a gold mine for this stuff. Like this. A great way to collect details is to go on a sensational walk. Sensational? Get it? Okay, bad pun. But still, it is a really great way to collect details. You can collect information from all of your senses, or you can focus on just one specific sense. And the really sensational part is that you can do these walks almost anywhere. So let's say you're writing a scene in which your character is baking, or entering a room where someone is baking. This might be the time to take a sensational walk past your local bakery, or stand inside the bakery and just soak up all the aromas. The other day, I went on a sensational walk into a forested park and collected only information my ears gave me. Actually, I sat at a picnic table because, you know, walking with your eyes closed is not highly recommended. Birds, as it turns out, don't all chirp. Some cheap, short little staccato notes. Some were whistling to their friends. One evil fellow was screaming as though he had murder on his mind. Everything sounds different when your eyes are closed. It's as though your hearing becomes a superpower. Well, I think you get the idea. For our first ingredient, it's all about the details. Details make up the base for our magic elixir, but what you do with these details is also important. Adding emotion gives these details their flavor. Imagine you're brushing your teeth again, only this time you're angry. How does that change the scene? Do you slam the door on the way into the bathroom? Do you squish the toothpaste tube so hard that toothpaste squirts everywhere except for on the toothbrush? Do you scrub your teeth so hard that the gums bleed? Good writers show details through the filter of their character's mood. In other words, emotion. Well, I think we're ready for the final ingredient. It's made up of two simple words but it's in these two words that the magic really happens. What if? Authors play the what if game all the time. Here's how it works. Let's say you're going about your business, 
when something catches your attention. Maybe you're walking through the park and you see this kid up in a tree and you think, what's she doing up there? That sparks your imagination and the game begins. What if she's hiding from someone? What if she's spying on someone? What if she's an alien collecting data to take back to her home planet? What if she falls under the tree just as you're walking by and you're the only one there who can help? Being curious and playing the what if game develops a strong imagination and that's always a good thing. When I was beginning to write Winds of Lackadie, I was finding it a challenge to figure out how I could draw my 21st century readers into an 18th century story. Then I thought, what if my character Sarah could travel back in time to 1755, meet an Acadian family, and actually be there when the Acadians were being sent away from their homes? I'm going to read the part where Sarah first travels back in time. I hope you feel as though you're right there with Sarah. Sarah pulled the lid off the quill box and was about to put the stone inside when a strong wind came out of nowhere. The icy cold fingers of the wind gripped her and sliced through her flesh like needles. It whipped wildly at her hair and clothes and Sarah felt herself becoming dizzy. Frantically, she reached out to grab onto something but there was nothing to grab. Finally, the roar of the wind trailed off in the distance and Sarah felt herself falling slowly as though the wind had spent its anger and was trying to set her down gently like a leaf fluttering to the ground. She opened her eyes. Where was the special trinket box? She must have dropped it when the crazy wind caught her by surprise. Her grandfather would never forgive her if she lost it. She looked along the dike trying to find it. That's when she noticed she wasn't alone. For this final ingredient, let your imagination run wild. No idea is too silly for the what if part of the elixir. Be curious about everything and take some time to wonder. With this writing activity, the transformation of something ordinary, like brushing your teeth, into an extraordinary scene is complete. I hope you have fun with the what if game. Bye for now.